So I've got my robotic reflow uh, skillet ready to go. Um, I did a little bit of testing and I imported the data in Excel and I graphed it and it looks like this is going to be okay. So the next thing is I have to go back and put so um, solder onto the circuit board so I can solder this little chip here. Um, and only a couple of these little pins have to be soldered and some people use like uh, you know, a syringe, and they, they really carefully just inject a little bit of solder onto each pin. But because I have a laser cutter, um, I can cut a stencil. And so this is my little circuit board holder. And I cut the outline of the circuit board. And then this is capped on. This is a um, heat resistant, uh, pretty strong, thin film. And um, if you look carefully, you can see the little holes match up on the little pads that need to be soldered. So what you do is, this is just like a silk screen, uh, you put a dab of solder in, you squeegee it over, and then when you lift the cap on off, or the film, uh, little bits of solder are left where they need to be. Um, here are some other examples of previously cut stencils. This one is made out of uh, three mil mylar. This works okay, you can get mylar pretty cheap. It's like $10 for uh, a huge amount. But um, the problem is this is kind of thick and also the mylar melts a little bit and so you can't get really fine cuts. Um, and this is another sheet of Kapton. I write the settings. This was 100 speed, 15 power, 500 hertz uh, frequency. And uh, you know, I try a couple different settings. Um, Kapton comes in these big ass sheets. So you know, you can see I do a lot of tests on the sheet until I get what I think is, you know, a pretty good setting and then usually I muck around some more. Here's two sheets of Kapton and a sheet of Mylar. So, let's go with the silk screening. Circuit board's in the nice holder so it's nicely aligned. Uh, then I take the top off just because it's a little easier to dispense and I put a blob of solder. That's enough for a couple boards. I'm only going to do a demo right now. Make a whole bunch later, and then you know you just take a piece of acrylic, just some, just a square. You can use a, I guess like a, a paint scraper or a squeegee, but this works okay. And uh, you just squeegee it over. So you see there's solder in the little holes that were cut out of the stencil. So now when you lift this up, if you look carefully, you can see little deposits of solder. Now, uh, normally you'd have holes for every single pin, but this chip only has 10 pins soldered, so that's why I uh, didn't cut them all out. So you take this stencil off, and then uh, you have your chip. You place your chip. I do it by hand, but most people use tweezers. So now it's placed, and now we're ready to reflow it. Okay, so this is the reflow skillet I built. Uh, this system is not really ideal, but you know this is kind of what I had kicking around the house. So we have um, the thermocouple. This is a thermocouple, and I got the one that has the insulated glass bead, um, so that it can withstand high temperatures because this gets up to like you know almost 250, could possibly get up to 300 degrees Celsius. And I taped it down with Kapton tape. This is the actually the same material that I made the um, silk screen out of. Uh, you know, this is a couple dollars, it's like twenty dollars for a roll, but it's really handy because um, it doesn't melt under high temperatures. It's designed for um, the sort of stuff for attaching um, thermistors and stuff. Okay, time to reflow. So this is the chip. It's got the silk screen solder on it. Put the chip on top. Now I place it in my reflow skillet. Uh, so this skillet has a servo connected to a little wheel, and the wheel turns the temperature knob. That's pretty much how it turns it on and off. It's running open loop, but I calibrated it and it should pretty much just run the same every time. So plug in the Arduino and it's got an LCD on it and this is the servo controller. So when it starts up it tells me what the temperature it's reading from the um, sensor and this is approximately what temperature it should be. You know it sort of uh, guesses um, based on the profile published on the Kester data sheet, um, you know, at this t point in time we should be at around 55 degrees and it's around 55, so it's doing okay. Uh, like I said, I calibrated it. So, uh, first we do the warm up. 
Uh, that's the first part of the curve, and you can see this is slowly turning. Um, uh, and the warm-up basically takes the board up to about 120 degrees Celsius, and that just kind of um, gets the board ready for the reflow, uh, you know, as some chemical processes occur at that temperature. Okay, at around 90 seconds um, of warm-up, uh, we go into the soak phase, and so this is where uh, basically the skillet is between, you know, 120, 150, maybe up to 180 degrees, and uh, basically it's, uh, it seems like it, the, the solder paste soaks into the joints. Um, it doesn't quite melt, but this is sort of a preparatory step for the actual reflow. And this happens for about 30 to 60 seconds. Okay, so now we're actually at the reflow phase. And so at this phase, it gets up to around 250 degrees. And you'll see, especially around here, you'll see it suddenly gets very shiny instead of sort of being matte. And that's the solder reflowing into the joints. So you're seeing this is getting up kind of to around 200 degrees. It'll, it'll probably peak at around 220 degrees. So you see how this is now a little shiny that the uh, solder being reflowed. Finally, after we hit around 220 degrees, uh, we do cool down. So basically, slowly cool down everything. Uh, you know, this sets the solder. Uh, you know, hopefully we didn't char anything. Um, usually it's supposed to cool down a little faster than this, but I don't think it's a really big deal. It cools down a little slower than it ought to. Uh, you can turn a fan on and that helps. Finally, it's cooled down and I take it off the skillet once it's down to, you know, about 80 degrees Celsius so it's not too hot to touch. And you can see here that these pins are nicely soldered, but there's no um, bridges. It's just a nice, clean, minimal solder joint on these pins here. So now this board's ready to go into the USB Arduino kit. It's a through-hole breadboarding Arduino clone that I made um, about a year ago. And uh, you can get it at Adafruit for about 25 bucks.